What's good, math family? In today's video, we're going to focus on how to simplify rational expressions. When we're dealing with rational expressions, we have to remember that this is a combination of exponent rules, fraction rules, and factoring rules. So when I look at my first example, there's two ways we could break this down. I'm going to start off with the easier method. So we could break down 12 as 4 times 3. Right? We want to use similar factors. And then x squared is just x times x. And then when we look at y to the third, this is y times y times y. All we're doing is just writing it out. Then when we go to the denominator, we could write this as 4 times 10. And then we'll write x to the third as x times x times x. And then that single y will be by itself. Now with this step, this is when we're able to go in and now use fraction properties and cancel out common factors. So 4 cancels out. Those two x's cancel out. We have another x cancel out. And then we could cancel one of our y's. So what we're left over with is 3y squared all over 10x. So this is our final answer. Now, the only reason why I'm not a big fan of this method is because when the exponents get a little bit higher, it is much harder to write everything out. What we can do, let's go up here, is let's think about this as a fraction. I know my highest common factor is 4. So when I divide 12 and 40 by 4, I'm going to have 3 over 10. Now, when we look at the fraction, I mean the exponents, remember we subtract bottom from top. So we have x squared minus x to the third power, which gives us x to the negative 1. This is at the top. Then when we do the same thing with the y, we have y to the third minus y to the first power, which gives us y squared. Now the issue with this is we have a negative exponent and what we have to do is bring it down to the bottom of that fraction. So when I come down here now we're going to get the same answer of 3y to the second power all over 10x. Now the x has a positive exponent of 1 and we have the same answer. Now when we go over to the second example Different factoring rules. So when we look at this numerator, only way we could simplify this is by the greatest common factor. So I could divide 2 and 10 both by 2. So when I pull that 2 out, I'm left with x plus 5. 2 is on the outside. It's going to stay there. Then on the bottom, we're using regular trinomial factoring rules, meaning it's going to multiply to 35, add to negative 2. So the factors of 35 are 1 times 35, 5 times 7. We know this is the only combination that could give us a negative 2 in the middle. So we have x and 7, x and 5. Now the larger number is going to take this middle sign, which is 7. So we know 7 is going to be negative, and, we're, and 5 is going to be positive. So when we multiply back, negative 35, when we add, negative 2. Now, as a, the fraction rules, we could cancel out x plus 5 with x plus 5, and our final answer would be 2 over x minus 7. And now we're going to go over to two more examples. In the next example, we have to kind of notice these two special cases. So yes, we know that our factors for 1 is just 1 times 1. And we should identify and know that this is a perfect square trinomial, so we're going to have the same two factors. And we should know that this is going to break down to x plus 1 times x plus 1, right? When we add these two factors, they give us 2x, and we multiply, it gives us the 1. Now on the bottom, remember, anytime you have a binomial, right, x squared minus something, you should always think difference of squares. For us, this is the difference of squares, and, our, and the way we simplify this will be x plus 1 times x minus 1. That's why there's no middle term with just a single x. Now, at this step, after we factored our perfect square trinomial and difference of squares, we can now just cancel using those properties of fractions. And what we're left with would be x 
plus 1 over x minus 1. Before we go to the last problem, the way you could identify this is a perfect square trinomial is just understanding that it follows this format, right? a squared plus 2 times ab plus b squared. So when we look at x squared, which is a, right? We know the square root is just x. And then when we look at 1, that is a perfect square. 1 times 1 gives us 1. And then when we look at the middle term, that's the, that's the telling part. The middle term is 2 times a, b, which will be 2 times x times 1, which will give us that 2x. I linked the perfect square trinomial video down below if you guys need help with identifying and factoring. Now, this example, similar to one of our last ones, we are going to have to do more than one step of factoring. So the first thing we want to do in both the numerator and the denominator is take out the greatest common factor, which would be 2. So when I take out 2 from the numerator, we have x squared minus 2x minus 3. And then on the bottom, when we do the same step, we have 2 times x squared minus 4x minus 5. Now, if anybody's asking or wondering, hey, Peters, what if I could not divide all three of those terms by 2? You could always use the slip and slide method, aka the AC method, meaning you could take the A, multiply it by C, so that this term will just, the leading coefficient will be 1. And I'll also link a video down below for you guys if you need practice on it as well. So now we're focusing on these factors, right? And we know what? It's going to multiply to give us 3 for the top, right? And these are the only two factors. So when I go in, the top is going to be 2 times x minus 3 times x plus 1. That is what the numerator factors down to. Then we go down to the denominator, and the only factors are just 1 and 5. So when I break this down now, and I know my factors are 1 and 5, yep, and then what we want to do here is now pay attention to the signs. So if this larger number is negative, that means 5 negative, and the 1 is going to be positive. And now with this step, we use those fraction properties and cancel out common factors. So we could cancel out the twos, and we could cancel out x plus 1 with x plus 1. And what we're left with is going to be x minus 3 all over x minus 5. And this would be our final answer for this problem. So when you're simplifying algebraic expressions, rational expressions, Please remember that it's a combination of factoring, laws of exponents, and fractions. And we also are going to do a live stream on this in the next few days. Please look out for that. We're going to link the video down below as well in case you guys need practice. Thank you guys so much for continuing to watch Algebra with Mr. Peters. If you found this video helpful, smash the like button for us. Comment down below and let us know if you have questions on this video or if there's topics you'd like to see on our, our channel in the future, thank you guys so much for continuing to watch Algebra 1 with Mr. Peters.